Okay, so we're moving on to finding the gradient of a line uh, in the, in, using the formula. But before we get to it, remember we have the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus c, where n is the gradient. Okay, and remember gradient means the slope of a line. So this is looking at the vertical rise of a horizontal run. And from here, we get this equation, m equals y um, sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. How do we get this formula? Well, how do we come up with this formula? I'm going to show you using this example. So if you think about this, we're asked to find the gradient of the interval a, b, where a equals 3, 6. So let's just quickly draw this. And with any of these questions, if you ever get stuck, always sketch. It just helps. So here's 3, 6. That's my point A. And my B is 5. Actually, I'll make A a little bit bigger. So it'll be 5 and 6 is up here. Of course, these are not drawn to scale. 5, 5. Okay, so I'm looking at the gradient of this line here. All right. Now, if I were to draw a right angle triangle and make that part of the interval A be the, the hypotenuse, so this is 3, 6 here, 5. If I was to draw a right angle triangle, let's say we do it over here. So that's clear. Okay. There we go. All right. Now let's just stick this so it looks at least and there's six. Okay, so if you think about it, here's my right angle triangle, and I want to find the gradient of this line, so the steepness. Well, if I look at the distance between five and six, that's just one unit, and the distance between three and five, well, that's two units. So if I was to use gradient is equal to vertical rise over horizontal run, well, the vertical rise is 1, the horizontal run is 2, but the line is leaning to the left, to that negative end over here, the second quadrant. Okay, so that means this gradient is negative. So I end up with negative a half. Okay, so how did we get this? Well, if you think these are my y values. So if I was to label this as x1, y1, and this one x2 and y2, all right, well, let's see. 3 is my x1, and 6 is my y1. Then 5 is my x2 here, and this one is my y2. Well, if I now go back to the formula over here, instead of drawing all of this and using vertical rise, horizontal run, and looking at which way the line's leaning, I can just go straight into this formula. And using the values, so y2 is 5 minus y1, which is 6. So the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's, 5 take away 3. Well, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And 5 take away 2, 3 is 2. So there's the gradient. Okay, so that's where this formula comes from. All right, just by looking at that example. All right, now, another thing that we want to point out is that gradients, uh, it's one of the slides that you need to copy down. We can have the gradient, as we just said, negative, positive. So if I have y, okay, this way we have a positive gradient. If I have that way, it's a negative gradient, all right? Well, what's the great, well, how do I know when the gradient is zero? It's a flat line going this way, okay? So here, the gradient is equal to zero. Gradient is undefined if I have a a uh, line that's parallel to the y-axis going this way. That's an undefined gradient, but at this stage, that's really all we need to use. All right, so 
define the gradient, we can use, we can read it straight from the equation as long as we arrange it into this form, y equals mx plus c. We can use this formula to figure it out, or we can use another formula that you probably haven't seen before, and it is n is equal to tan theta. Okay, it's one of the slides that you need to copy down. I'm just moving things around here so I can find an example from the textbook so that I can work it out. Okay, so n equals tan theta is another way of finding the gradient. Um, so let's just look here. Okay, so it's an angle of inclination, right? The gradient and the angle of inclination. So, let's have a look at this one here. All right, if I have a line going this way, I'm looking at the angle of inclination here, and that's my theta. Okay, so it is the angle of an inclination that it's made with the x-axis. So here, this the gradient here is going to be positive. That's short for positive. Okay. However, if I draw a line going the other way, let me just get another colored pen. So if I'm going this way, right, the angle of the inclination, well, it we're looking actually this angle here is my theta, which is an obtuse angle. So this is obtuse. All right? But when I'm looking at it this way, of course, m is going to be negative. Okay? So when I use this formula, we need to look at the angle of the inclination and depending whether it's an acute angle or an obtuse angle, we need to see what happens with the result. So let's just have a look at a question where it says, um, I'm just going to write it here on the board. Uh, example. Okay, um, just, okay, given the points, so given the points A, which is negative 25, B is negative 6, 0, and C is 0, 0, okay, find the angle of inclination, now the angle of inclination of the interval A, B, A, B, sorry this is poorly written, Okay, uh, and AO. Okay, now let's have a look and see what this, what is this asking us to do. So the, always, to just get an idea of what's going on, let's just quickly plot these points. So negative 3, 5, there's A. Uh, B is negative 6, 0, so negative 6, 0 is somewhere over here, that's B, and 0, 0 is C, right, at the origin. So I have three points here. Now, what do I want to do is find the angle of inclination of the interval AB. AB is over here. So if I was just to draw this line, okay, I need to find this angle here. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So first of all, I need to find the gradient of AB. So let's do that first. The gradient of AB is going to be y2 minus y1, 0 minus 5, 
over minus 6 minus minus 3. So it gives you negative 5. These two become a positive over negative 3. So it's 5 on 3. Okay, 5 on 3. So now all I need to do, let's call this theta here. So 10 theta is equal to 5 on 3. I'm finding the angle of inclination. So if we go back to um, solving right angle trigonometry, theta is equal to the inverse of 3. You type that into the calculator and you get the angle to be approximately 59 degrees to the nearest degree. Okay, so I figured that that's, uh, that angle here is 59 degrees. So here, 59 degrees. Okay, then I'm asked to find the angle of inc inclination AO. Okay, here is A. So let's draw another line going this way. Okay, there's AO. And the angle of inclination is actually going to be this obtuse angle that we're going to end up with. But I actually want this, well, let's just call this alpha. Okay, let's do alpha on the side here. So the gradient of AO is equal to, um, sorry, this should be A, yeah, AO. All right, so it's going to be, it's actually C, to be AC here. All right. So, 0 minus 5 all over 0 minus minus 3. So that's negative 5 on um, 3. Okay. So... That means using tan alpha, which is negative 5 on 3, then alpha is the inverse when you type into the calculator. Okay, and you get an angle that it's 121 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is 121 degrees. Okay. So, of course, that's a negative gradient, so that's why we get that obtuse angle. If we were asked to find this angle here, we can always figure it out because you can do 180 minus 121 and you get the answer. Okay, so that's how you use that formula, m equals tan theta. All right, we'll leave it there for now and then I'll um, continue with the rest on the second video.